Hello and welcome to the webcast on how to take a test on Blackboard. Now this webcast is specifically designed for students attending Centennial College and applies to um, Blackboard uh, version 8. If you're working on a version other than Blackboard 8, some of the uh, formatting of this may be different, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the first thing to do when you come to Blackboard is to uh, log in. You do that through the user login. Once you've entered this screen, you're going to enter in your username and your password. You're going to click the login button. This will bring you to your home screen. And in Blackboard, you'll notice that you have all your courses laid out on the right hand side here. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to click my course Technology, Society, Ethics, and the Environment. And regardless of which course you're in or which version um, of Blackboard you're using, you should notice that the place where you access the test is in the same spot if it's been set up properly. So that will be through the assignments. So you're going to go to the assignments button and click on the assignments button. And what you'll notice is there's uh, a thing called a test test here. And that's the test that I've set up just for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, what it will most likely be called is test number one or whatever the teacher designates for you the test to be called. Um, but I'm going to click on test test. You'll notice that once you've clicked on the test itself, you're going to be prompted to either begin the test or to cancel to return. Now, if you click the cancel button, you're going to end up going back to the previous screen. But if you're taking the test, that's not what we want to do. We actually want to take the test. So we're going to click again on test test. Key point here is as soon as you click OK, most tests, especially ones for my class, are forced completion, which means you have to complete them once you've begun them. And once you click this OK button, this is the point of no return. So I'm going to click OK, and I have now begun the test. This is just the same as if I walked into the room and sat down at a desk and started to write the test in paper. Now the first thing that you'll want to do, just like any other test, is you want to read the instructions first. And the instructions on Blackboard will tell you things like how long you have to complete the test. So this is right here in the timed assessment piece. So this test partic particularly has a 10 minute timer for it. Generally as a rule of thumb, however many questions there are, you'll get twice that amount in time for your test. So if you have 15 questions, you'll get 30 minutes. If you have 30 questions, you'll get 60 minutes, and so on. The next thing you want to pay attention to is how many attempts you're allowed to have when writing the test. You'll see that this particular test has been set to one attempt. There are no multiple attempts allowed for this test. Now different instructors may set this parameter to a different setting and allow you to take the test more than once. But it's good to know if you only have one shot, then this is your only shot. Now the other thing uh, is the force completion, which I mentioned earlier. Read this to see whether or not you have the ability to come back to the test later. If it says this test must com be completed now, it means that once you've started the test, you cannot go out of the test. If you leave the test, you'll be locked out. If you go to the bathroom and try to come back, or if you close your browser by mistake and try to come back, if you press the back button by mistake and try to come back, all of these things will lock you out of the test. And if that happens, you're going to need to contact your instructor right away uh, to let them know. Now taking the test is fairly straightforward. It's very similar to taking an online survey. Um, basically, you're going to indicate your answer by selecting the question or the answer that coincides with what you think is the right answer. I've given two different types of questions here. The first one is a multiple choice question in which you have the actual question itself right here, and then the options for the question are right here. So what you want to do, obviously, is you read the question, and you pick whichever one you think is the appropriate answer. So this is just a test. I'm going to click on number one to give you a sense of what it looks like. Now, you have an option over on your right-hand side here to save the input that you just provided. So that will, if you click this button, this dialog box comes up, 
and it tells you that you've successfully saved this question. Now that does not mean that you've saved the test, it just means that you've saved this question. Where this can become beneficial is if you know you're writing the test in a thunderstorm and you think the power might go out or if you're worried about your computer crashing or whatever the concern may be about a technological error if you save the question the saved response gets put on the server and the teacher will have access to it as soon as you click save the next type of question I put here is a true or false question so the question I've written is you have 50% chance of getting this right. We know when there's two options, you absolutely have 50% chance of getting it right. So I'm going to click true for that. And again, I can click save here. If I'm worried about losing some of my responses, click save. It tells you the question was successfully saved and the time. Then we click OK. Now, normal tests are going to be longer than two questions, generally speaking. Um, so you're going to have a, a few more questions to answer before you can go to the next step. But you want to make sure that you've answered all of the questions. Once you've answered all of the questions, you're going to click the Save button. And what this does is saves your entire test for you. Now once you've saved the entire test, you're ready to submit the test. Now you're going to click the Submit button, but before you do, make sure that you understand once you click this button, you're done the test. This is just as the same as if you handed the paper over to the teacher. You won't get the test back until it's been marked. So you're clicking the submit button, you're confirming that you're ready to submit the test. And you'll see that there's actually, once you've clicked the submit button, a dialog box comes up and it says, do you want to confirm your assessment submission? So say you got to this point and maybe there's a question that you answered incorrectly but you know the answer to it. Before this point, you have a chance to go back and redo the question. This is how you do it. You click cancel, you're back into the test. Maybe you want to select C instead of A. So you change your answer, go back to submit. Once you click OK, you've handed in the paper. Okay, you can't get it back. You confirm your submission by clicking OK. And what you'll notice is there's a dialog box that comes up tells you that your assessment was successfully submitted, the name the, of your the student, the name of the assessment, the course you're in, and the date and time that it's submitted. Now what I recommend to my students is that you print this screen. However you do it, whether you have to go up to the top here and press File, Print, or if you're working on a PC, you have a Print Screen button, you can press that. But print this screen, save it for your records, so that you have verification that you have submitted the test. Now you notice this dialog here says click OK to review the results. Basically what that means is your test results are available for you right away. All you have to do is click OK and you'll get the results of your test. So you'll see that for question number one, it tells me what the selected answer was. When in doubt, I pick C. Well, C wasn't the right one, so there's an X here that tells me it's the wrong answer. And then right below that, it tells you what the correct answer is. Now, you may see more information than this, depending on the parameters that the teacher has set up for you. Um, there might be feedback, feedback here. Um, but generally speaking, a rule of thumb is that you have a selected answer, which is the answer you gave, and then whatever the correct answer is. So you can see for the multiple choice one, I got that one wrong. But then for the true false, I got it right. So the green check mark is a good thing means I got that question right. So you can see here there's an A with a green check mark. That means I got that question right. There's an A with a red X, a horrible red marker. Um, that means I got that question wrong. So this is how you review your submission of your test. Once you've done that, all you have to do is click OK, and it'll bring you back to the beginning screen, and you're pretty much done. The last thing that you can do, though, is you can actually see your grade, although it is in the review results. Um, you can actually see the grade itself by going into your grade book, which would be located um, down here somewhere. Now for, for myself, because I'm the instructor, I have a control panel. And if I click on the control panel, I can actually go into the grade center. I'm not going to do that because there's a bunch of grades there of students, so confidentiality reasons. Um, but the bottom line is that you'll be able to access your grade as soon as you're finished writing the test. So that's pretty much it. The last note, if you experience any technical difficulties in writing the test, it's very important that you contact your instructor right away through email. Do not wait until the 
time period when the test will no longer be available to let your instructor know. For my students, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time. And I hope you enjoyed this webcast, and good luck on your test.